Welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. Thank you so much for tuning in and painting with us using whatever you have. Um, you guys are so great and I love you that you take the time out in your day to just like come hang out with us and laugh and have a really great time. So we have lots of painters tonight. I am so excited to have everybody here, but we have Samantha on the end and we have her daughter Adelia here who painted me a peacock and she gave it to me right before and it How made me nice. so happy. <laughs> Thank you for that. And we have Cindy painting with us. And I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be so fun. I'm Sarah Cray, and we have Keenan who is working our videos. So that's that deep voice you'll I'm, hear every now and I'm then. I'm here just coasting in the background. <laughs> He's gonna tell me where to look and yeah. all of that fun Left. stuff. Left. <laughs> that's it. Okay, so tonight we are painting our robin eggs. This is our first tutorial out of our April box. So I know that most of you have them and um, if you don't have them yet, first of all, I am so sorry. We really thought they would all be on time, but you guys have been so gracious for just using what you have and being forgiving. And we're really working on getting those to you earlier so we can all paint together every single week. We are doing this in five steps. So. Step number one, actually, I'm gonna take this back so you know what I'm talking about. We'll throw that <laughs> We're gonna like do our placement of our eggs first. So it's just kind of a little soft outline of where our eggs are gonna be. Second step is we are going to do our nest bottom. So this kind of more dark circular area around our eggs. The third step, we are going to do the actual nest texture, the in and out and the different values. And then we're gonna go back in in step four and do our eggs and do them more detailed. We don't wanna do that first. If we do that first, then there's a good chance that they'll bleed out. And so we want kind of details to be near the end. And then that very last step is uh, just making sure everything's A-OK, -okay. details. It's what we always do, right? Last step, making sure it's nice and as good as it can be. We are using two brushes today. We are using around six and around two. Um, this is what we use for most all of our projects. So if you invest in any brushes, I would suggest these two because we use them for everything and they're really great. They get the job done. We are using four colors tonight. We have tangerine, black, lemon yellow, and um, azure. Dang, I forgot to look Azure's it up. Right. Is it azure? Yes. Azure blue. So we have those four. That is essentially a orange, a blue, a yellow, and a black. Those four colors. So even if you don't have our exact colors, you can still paint with whatever you have. You can make pink eggs. There's gotta be pink eggs somewhere. Every Easter I have. <laughs> Every Easter I see them. They come out. <laughs> so um, I think we're uh, ready to do our warm-ups. But before we do our warm-ups, we start with our oath. So I need everybody to raise their right hand and you need to repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise I won't compare my work. I promise I won't compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. And I love doing that part because Sometimes with art, we get so kind of like nervous and we think that it has to be perfect and we think it has to look exactly like someone else's and it doesn't. And that's the beautiful thing. It's your own. You make it your own every single time you paint it. And uh, we just got to embrace that part. That's the great thing about art. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a couple of warm-ups. So um, you can use the back of your watercolor papers too. I know that some people do the warm-ups on the back and that way they save their extra sheets in there and then they just paint on the front, so smart. Um, just use whatever you want. I'm gonna grab my round six. Actually, I'll move this down here. And the first thing we are gonna work on is different values. So the value of a color, it has nothing to do with the color. It has everything to do with the lightness and the darkness of a color. So in watercolor, to get a lighter value, we just add water because it's transparent and so the white of the paper is showing through more. That's how we get a lighter color. Um, if you want a darker color, then you just use a little bit more paint and not as much water. So we're going to practice that first because value is super important when you're trying to create form or depth or space. Basically anything to make it more two-dimensional, you gotta have some value. So I'm gonna get my brush wet. I'm gonna hit it off the side a little bit because if I go straight from the paintbrush to the paper, that is too much water. We don't want like 
pools or puddles on our paper. So I always like to like hit it off the side of my cup, of, side of my cup a couple of times. And then I'm gonna pick up a color, any color you want. I'm just gonna grab some blue and fill it, fill your belly of your brush with paint. So you're picking up a lot of paint. And then I want you to make any shape. You can do a rectangle, you can do a heart, you can practice your circles if you wanna practice your egg shape before we get going. Actually, that's what I'm gonna do from now on. So this here, you can see that it's strong in color as in it's darker. And then the next thing we are going to do is we are going to get a medium value. So I'm going to, I'm not picking up any more paint. I'm just dipping my paintbrush a couple of times and then hitting it off the side. So I'm only adding water to my paintbrush. And now do your shape. And you will see that this is a lighter value than the color you put before. Yep, yours is lighter, yours is lighter. Yours is lighter, wonderful. Now I want you to dip again. Dip it a couple of times, hit it off the side of your cup, and lay that color down. And I want you to keep on going, repeating that same process until the color is essentially gone. Oh, Melissa said she loves the new bottles. Melissa, I am so glad. These are our new bottles. Nice. They're no longer childproof, so you just take them off and you squeeze. They're really great. I'm so glad you like them. That's great feedback. <laughs> it is great feedback. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. If you like the new bottles, let us know. So really just keep on going with that same color. And this is what I love about watercolor so much is because I'm getting all of these different colors and I've only picked up paint one time. That's why watercolor is so amazing. It's just the water that really carries that paint and gets you all these different colors and gets you these different values. It's so great. My eggs have gotten smaller. <laughs> okay, so I want you to keep in mind, so when we are talking about painting, I want you to keep in mind that this is gonna be your dark. So think of like more paint. This area is going to be more your mediums. So this is more like our medium values here. And then this last bit where it's almost barely there, these are our light values. Because when we put in the nest, we're going to put in some dark, some mediums, and some lights. And so now you kind of have a reference to what those mean. Okay, the next thing that I want us to practice is we are going to practice putting in a color and getting a value transition in one stroke. So here you see how they kind of are separated, the different values. Well, let's try and get that smooth value all the way across. So I'm gonna pick up my brush, grab some water, hit it off the side a couple of times, pick up some paint, whatever color you want to play with. And I'm gonna do kind of a rectangle and I'm gonna repeat the same process where I'm gonna rinse my brush a couple times and right where I left off, I'm gonna keep on moving. So you're essentially like smearing the color out. So just keep on going until you get a barely there color. Oh, Heather asked what colors we're using. Lemon yellow, tangerine, black, and azure blue. So basically blue, orange, yellow, and gr black. Blue, orange, yellow, black. <laughs> Correct. Correct. I was about to say green, and I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. How are we doing? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. So this is a nice transition here, which means that there aren't any hard edges, or at least not super strong lines that are separating this value transition. It's smooth, you know? And that is great. That's perfect for when we're creating shading on anything, is most of the time, you don't want chunks of value, you want a smooth transition. And with watercolor, if you want something to be smooth, it's easier to work fast. Fast while it's wet, because then they'll like blend and bleed together. Now one thing I do want to say, especially for people who are new to watercolor or maybe just a little bit, I don't want to say like perfectionist as if it's a bad thing, but maybe you like work it a little too much, is if I try and do that value change and I'm going and I go and then I swoosh back to it and then keep working it back and forth, then I lose all of the value change, right? So you see how that evened out? 
which is great because if you want an even value, now you know you just have to swoosh it back and forth. But if you want that transition, you want to make sure that you kind of like leave it alone. Okay? Wonderful. So the next thing that we are going to practice is I want us to practice um, thin lines. So grab your paintbrush. And same thing, you're going to get it wet. You're going to hit it off the side of the cup. You're going to pick up some paint, and I just want you to practice trying to get really thin lines. Now, here's a couple things to remember when you're doing thin lines. Number one, you want to make sure that you are being super light in pressure. Because the wonderful thing about round brushes is if you press hard and press down, you can get a thick line. But using the same brush, if you are light in pressure, you can get a nice thin line. So you want to make sure like your brush is barely touching your paper and also that you're holding it kind of more up and down so you can use that point. So if I'm holding it straight up and down and I just move across my paper, I can get a thin line. Yep, very nice, very nice. Now, um, and how people like the direction, if you like push or pull your thin lines, that is totally preference. For me, I've noticed that it's so much easier for me to go across my paper than it is to go straight up and down. But if it's easier for you to go straight up and down, then do it. Just turn your paper to whatever orientation is easier for you. There's no wrong way. And the other thing I want you to keep in mind, and this one it's not as important since our eggs, like our nest isn't super huge, but if you wanna make long thin lines, you're not gonna to wanna to totally plant your wrist. If you totally plant your wrist, so all your weight is right here on the, is this the ball of your hand? We'll call it the wrist. The wrist. <laughs> There's like this part called the wrist of your hand. <laughs> okay, so if you plant your wrist, you're really limited in how long you can make your thin line. So that's about as long as I can go if I plant my wrist. And it's also going to want to curve because your wrist is on a joint. However, if you keep your, you can like still have your hand on the paper, just don't have your weight on it. So you're just like gliding across or letting it slide and you're moving from your shoulder or you're using your whole arm, you can go as long as you want to. Like, if I had this whole thing of paper, I could do a nice long thin line across that because I'm moving my shoulder and I'm not limiting the uh, length, which is super helpful. Okay. Let's do a little bit of wet on wet. <laughs> me too. Adelia's like, I love wet on wet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, me, me too. too. Me too. Same. Okay. Oh yeah, the heel of my hand. That could also work. I Thanks, Pat. I was just Pat. gonna say, Sally said heel of your hand. Yeah, good, good words, you guys, thank you. So for wet on wet, this is some of the best thing about watercolor because it's so accidental and it's so cool and it changes every single time and it makes it unique to you. You're gonna get your paintbrush. You're gonna get a wet area and let's do like a circle. So we're gonna do a circle or a rectangle, whatever, whatever you want. And then pick up some color, any color you want and just drop it in and just watch as that paint just like moves across. Is everything okay? Everything's great. You did a hmm, like something well, that's I, wrong. I love the wet on the wet. Oh. <laughs> so when you dropped the paint, I was like, ah. Oh yeah, it's so good. It's a good piece of steak. Now I have noticed that if you're doing wet on wet, and it's, see how that's like a puddle on my paper? If I try and drop color in to that, it's just gonna stay right there. It's not gonna wanna spread. So when you're doing your initial lay, you wanna make sure that there is water and that it's wet, but it's not like standing up like a bubble or a puddle because that water is not gonna, or that paint's not gonna spread in that. Also, um, sometimes like if we put a color down and it just like stays there and we wanna like help it move, you can totally help it move. This is your painting. So you can be like, come on, little guy. Come on, little fella, spread around a little bit more. Nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. 
So super fun. This, so we're gonna do this with the robin egg. So how we're gonna get that is we're gonna do like, I want you to do the same thing, but maybe practice instead of using just water, grab a little bit of paint. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of blue. I'm gonna make my circle. And then you can grab orange or whatever, just choose another color and drop that in there. And this is how we're gonna make those little speckles on those eggs, by doing a little wet on wet. Is our YouTube okay? We're checking our YouTube. Yeah, I'm checking the stream. It's saying that we're slow. And it's literally the only thing it is, is our internet is slow. Oh, bummer. <clears throat> I don't know why it's affecting us today. I know, we've done this for so long. Very nice, very cool. Okay. Uh, let me look at it and make sure there's something else we don't need to do. Oh, really quick. Uh, I'll just use another paper. So, just really quick, when we're doing our eggs... Oh, that was back into the brush. Classic. <laughs> so just really quick, when we're talking about eggs, um, it's we want to make sure there's value on it because that's how we're going to create form. So if you look, and I just want to illustrate this for you guys really quick. If I'm doing an egg here and it's just one value, so that's just one, see how that's just an even color or an even value right there. Now what we want to make sure when we go back and we do our egg details is that there's a highlight and there's also a low light and then the medium color. So I like to like make sure the middle is more highlighted because that's probably where the light source is hitting, somewhere around the top. And then you're gonna grab a little bit of a darker value because, as, because the egg is rounded. So if the light is coming, let's pretend the light is right on top of this egg and we have an egg right here. The top would be highlighted because that's where that light is hitting that egg directly. As that egg turns away from the light and goes underneath, it's gonna start turning into a darker value because it's turning away from the light. And that's how we give something form and dimension is by trying to put those lights and those shadows in to give it a little bit more shape. So even just by just doing a couple of things, like making sure there's a highlight, putting in a shallow, this circle, even though they're like the same shape, this looks more three-dimensional than this one because we have a value change. So you guys can see that? So it's like this magical trick. That's how you make anything seem like it has form and is sticky now and is actually there, is value. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. All right. I think we're ready to go. So, you can keep your uh, scratch paper nearby if you wanna test colors. We are gonna be doing some mixing today, so it's not a bad idea to have it close by. And we are going to get started. So, all of this is freehand. There is no outline with this, and that might seem so scary to you, but you guys can do it. It's just a piece of paper, and really you're just making like circular shapes. They don't even have to be perfect circles because like nests are all different sizes and eggs are all different sizes and they're kind of ovally anyway. So you guys are gonna do great. So the very first step is we're just gonna put our eggs, like a placement of our eggs. So I'm going to pick up my round six and we're just gonna use a really, really light value. So think back to our warm-ups. You wanna put, you wanna make sure that they're gonna stay in kind of this range, so very light. So you're just grabbing a little bit of paint here. And you're gonna start putting your eggs in. Now I'm gonna try and shoot for like the middle of my paper because that's safe. The nest is gonna go around the egg. So I'm gonna try and stay central. If you go a little off center, it's not a big deal. And I always end up trimming, trimming my paper anyway. So don't stress if it's not perfectly in the center of your paper. 
And I'm just gonna start placing my eggs. Now you can do three eggs, you can do four or five, however many eggs you want. I'm gonna try and stick to what my example is here. So I'm gonna do five. So I'm just gonna start putting those shapes in. Now, a lot of people have painted this and posted it and they've been so great. And some people have been doing like three eggs or two. So really just however many eggs you wanna do. Nothing wrong with that. And remember, this is adjustable. So it, maybe you paint this and then later on you're like, I don't like the shape of my eggs. Well, you can, you know, enclose around it a little bit more and change the shape of them. Not a big deal. Some are going to be a little bit bigger than others. That's okay. And they can even overlap a little bit, right? Because sometimes those eggs lay against each other and very nice, very nice. So it's gonna be nice and light. I wonder if they can even see that. Which one? The eggs. Can they see the eggs from the top cam? I can see them. Okay. But I can no, if you can see them, Keenan, I trust you. I mean, I have pretty bad glasses. <laughs> are those the broken ones from soccer? Did you get new ones? No, these are, these are the fixed ones. These are the fixed ones from... <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Wonderful. How are you doing, Cindy? Mm, getting there. You're doing great. Oh, also, I should have mentioned this. I think I checked your guys before I laid them down. There is a back and front to the watercolor paper. So you want to go for the side that's slightly more textured. Now, both the front and back are really similar. So if you accidentally paint on the back, it's not a big deal. I really do that a lot, so don't stress. But the side that you want to paint on is has a little bit more texture. It's a little bit rougher. So um, you'll notice it in probably heavier weight papers like arches that are really toothy. There's obviously a front and a back. Um, this one, it's not as obvious, but try and paint on the side that just has a little bit more texture on it. That is what we're looking for. Oh good, they're saying they can see the eggs. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so once you have, and this is just step one. We've pretty much almost done step one. Good job, you guys are doing so great. Um, I'm just gonna tell you that when we move on to step two, we are going to be mixing a brown. And you might not know how to mix a brown, but the wonderful thing about brown is you basically just mix like a bunch of colors together and you get brown. So it's not that bad. Also known as a mud pie. Also <laughs> mud. You just mix everything You just together. mix everything together. Yeah. <laughs> so brown is essentially like a dark orange. So something that you can do is you can take your orange, you can take a little bit of black, and you can mix those together. So I'm going to do that on our tray, if that is OK. So um, I'm just grabbing some orange. Now you can also mix complementary colors together to get um, muddy colors or really dark colors. And if you're not sure what complementary colors are, um, if you have the color wheel, it's just what's across from the color wheel. So if you have those six colors going in a circle, evenly split up, I don't know if I have my color wheel right next to me, but just go what's across from it, that's its complement. So blue and orange are, accent, are actually complementary colors. So you can also mix those two together to get like a brown. Okay. Uh, Sandra's like sweet, accidentally picked the correct side. <laughs> good job, Sandra. Nice. You're good at this. Okay, that is looking great. So let's move on to our second step, which is the bottom. So I'm gonna grab my brown and I'm going to kind of like uh, let's actually start around the eggs first. 
So I'm going to start kind of making an outline a little bit around my eggs. I'm not going to try and go in between them too much. I'm just going to start kind of going around them. Now if you feel more comfortable using your small brush for this part, that is totally okay. Use whatever, br whatever brush you feel comfortable using. So I'm just going to kind of surround them with this brown. And then I'm going to make my shape of my nest bottom. Now the wonderful thing, and if you guys have been seeing the pictures that people have posted, is nests aren't even totally circles sometimes. Like sometimes they kind of like veer off in like a triangle shape or something. So really feel free to make this nest shape however much, how, whatever size you want, because it's not wrong. Birds, I feel like they like do it wherever it works. Sometimes nests are shaped like gutters. Yes. And they just live in a gutter. <laughs> yeah. So. So I, I'm going to start making my shape around it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in kind of more of a circular shape. But it's OK if it's a little bit wonky, because that would be true to how we would see a real nest, right? They're not perfectly circle. Very nice. Now, once you outline it, I would encourage you to switch to a larger brush because we're going to try and fill in a larger amount of space quicker and it's just easier to do that with a bigger brush. So I'm using my round six and you want to use the side of your brush too. So I'm going to like really let the belly of my brush do a lot of the work. And you can just decide it's going to be up to you. Very nice. It's going to be up to you um, how big you want to make your circle around your eggs. So if you want it to be a really tight enclosed nest, then you wouldn't make that nest bottom too much wider than the eggs surrounding it. If you want it kind of be kind of more open, and um, if you want it more open, then you're just going to make your circle around it a little bit bigger. I. I, I really feel like there's so much variation in nature that I don't, I, I guess I don't know enough about robin's eggs to say that like their nests are always this way. We could throw some pretty confident <laughs> facts out there. <laughs> I mean, I can pretend like I know, but I don't know. <laughs> if you guys know information about robin's nests, where if they're like super tight all the time, let me know that. That would be really great. I'll share that with the group. Yeah. But for now, we can just do whatever we want. What's up? Our friend Nicole logged Nicole on Santos? to YouTube. Yes. Oh, Nicole, hello. She logged on to YouTube and said, Keenan, I logged on the minute you gave your gutter fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Miss you guys and see you next week. Hi to you all. Hi, Nicole. It wasn't really a gutter fun fact. It was just, <laughs> I was kind of trying to joke about the birds live anywhere. You know what? We put a terrarium outside, like a glass one that had succulents, and it had an open top. And um, if you guys saw the picture I posted when I announced the project of that robin's eggs nest, it's in the top of the terrarium. Like it just, and the birds hatched from there. It was so great. Oh, that's My adorable. girls loved it. How are y'all doing? You guys are doing great. Is it okay for that I colored inside? Mm hmm. Yeah. So if you have a little bit more space in between your eggs and you want to go ahead and color in between them, go for it. I can even do that now. There we go. Also, I feel like my circle is just a little too, I don't know, I want it to be lopsided. I'm going to make it a little funky shaped. Mine is definitely funky. <laughs> well, then you're doing it right, I Cindy. Think I should have made it just one more again there. No, I'm going to make mine a little off center. Now, 
don't be super concerned about making the bottom of your nest really dark at this point um, because we are going to do another layer probably when we do after we like detail our eggs we'll go in and we'll make sure there's strong shadow underneath those eggs so don't stress the wonderful thing about watercolor is if you want to make something darker all you have to do is just do another layer now sometimes when things are wet like this it won't um, turn dark if it's too wet because there's too much water on your paper so sometimes the best thing is just to let it dry and then when it is dry do another layer and you're good to go Keenan Maggie says that sh they've got loads of sparrow nests in their gutters so you're in good company. I like her. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of math do birds like? They don't. <laughs> <laughs> Who likes math? <laughs> Algebra. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's good, Susan. I like that. I okay. Joke. You do? Okay, okay, I'm ready so for it. What kind of song does a hummingbird sing? What kind of song does a hummingbird sing? I don't know. A hymn in it. Yeah. A hymn in it. That's good. I like that. We're going to have you on every week if you keep coming back with these jokes. <laughs> we need jokes. We just send a car down for her every Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send Brock. <laughs> we'll send Brock to come pick you up. Okay. So, you guys, we like did step two, you're doing so great. Yes, you're doing great. Take a breath, just take a breath. Sometimes we're like, just take a deep breath. You guys are doing so awesome. So now we're gonna move on to more the textured part of this nest. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky, only because this is what our brain tells us we see. When we think of a nest, we're like, oh, nests are like crazy and wild, so like, there that, right? Which isn't wrong, but the difference is, is that these are layers. And so in order to communicate those layers and show that it's like actually a three-dimensional thing is we have to make sure we have our values. So if you look at our nest here, see how I have chunks of like dark and we have chunks of, chunks of highlight and we have chunks of that medium value. If we do that, then that is communicating that it's actually layers of like twine and twigs and you know, hopefully not trash, but that's the world we live in and, you know, dog hair and all of that kind of stuff. So if we take the time to make sure that we kind of like chunk it out and then overlap them, then that is going to give us more of a feel of depth to our nest, right? So it's not just like a string that's curled. It's like layers of things built up. So let's do that. So you can use your... Um, six or your round two, whatever you feel comfortable using. And I'm going to get a nice dark value here. So I'm going to make sure it's nice and dark. And I'm just going to start by doing circular chunks that kind of like follow the shape of my nest. So, my f so it's going to be kind of looking like this. So it's kind of following my shape. They're kind of overlapping with each other. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes these chunks are gonna overlap a little bit. They're gonna get a little bit thicker. But the bottom line is we wanna kind of create this surrounding shape. And we wanna do it in chunks like this because then it gives us space to put in light values and highlights. If I took a paintbrush and I just did it dark all the way around, we would lose our opportunity to put in those highlights. Sarah said she once saw a nest with a shoestring in it. That's interesting. That's a smart bird. That is a smart bird. And you can play with the size of these loops that you're putting in here. Um, let them, let some of them be small and let some of them be long. The thing that we want to do when we're not used to creating something or painting is we want to have them all be the same exact size and like a, a, like a nice little pattern that like, you know, but that's not how nature actually is. It's not perfectly patterned in those things. So you, some chunks are gonna be thicker. Some are gonna be longer. So make sure you have that variation in there. 
Very nice. And you can, you can see I'm putting some thinner ones in here too. So some are thick and some are thin. So some of them I'm using like the belly of my br brush and pushing down to get that thick line. And some of them I'm using more the tip to get more thinner lines. Oh, Pam says it's her first live with her subscription too. Excited to paint. Welcome, Pam. So glad you're here. Very good. And don't be afraid to make okay. them a little bit longer. Because okay. you see how they're all about the same size? Mm -hmm. Really mess that up. Be like, this one's going to be really long, and this one's going to be really small, and this one's going to be different. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to see. Okay, so I put in my dark values. And we can go back and forth between them, so don't feel like, oh, no, I don't know if I got all my dark values in. Guess what? You can put those in later if you feel like you need to, so not a big deal. But I'm going to put in some more medium values. So if you're thinking back to our warm-up sheet, I want you to think back to maybe these colors. So if this is our dark, here's our medium. So this is kind of where we're going to go play now. So I'm going to have a little bit more water on my brush. And I'm going to actually use a, a little bit more orange in this mixture. And maybe a little bit of yellow. Because I like pops of color, personally. I like having a little bit of that color depth in a painting. So I'm mixing a little bit more orange in here. Grab some yellow. So it's this nice, like, warm, light brown. Almost like a sienna. And then I'm going to do the same thing of these overlapping, like, circular shapes, but using this medium value. Now, don't cover up all of the white spaces. Don't do that yet. We're not there. You still want to leave some white spaces for our highlights and our light values. So we're just putting in our mediums for now. And yes, they're going to run into each other. And yes, they're going to bleed together. And that's OK. And if you want to, because this is how I am. Sometimes I like to take just pure drops of color and put them in. So I'm just going to grab some straight tangerine and drop that in there. Because I feel like it just needs a little bit more color. Now it might be scary. So if you don't want to do that, that's OK. But don't be afraid to try something. Because the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll just like hide this where nobody will see it and just do another one. It's just a piece of paper. So don't let that stop you from trying something that might be fun. I mean, these four here will be on the internet forever, but <laughs> everyone else can hide what they paint. Thanks, Keenan. Thanks for saying that. You really made them comfortable. Good job. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. Very nice. And don't be afraid to get some longer ones in there, too. Should we do a check-in, maybe? I was actually just going to suggest Oh, good. Keenan, me, and you were one mind tonight. That's right. All right. So we're going to do a little check-in. Is it OK if I grab this? Mm -hmm. OK, so this is Cindy's. And this is looking really good. I love the lightness of her eggs. And the shapes of them are very nice. And I like the shape of her nest, too. The only thing I would suggest is, even though we're still doing layers, I want to fill it in a little bit more. Is it OK if I paint on this? Yep. OK. So, so I'm just going to go in and put in a little bit thicker strokes. I think you did a really great job doing different lengths. You see how some are mm -hmm. short and some are long, but they're all the same thickness. Mm -hmm. And I kind of want to mess that up a little bit. So I'm just going to go in and thicken up some of these areas. And the whole time I'm paying attention to the overall shape, right? So it's like I'm still keeping the shape of this oval in mind. So I'm working around that. I'm doing that. <laughs> there we go. 
So I think I think that as we like add a little bit more to it, that's going to make it feel just a little bit more that's full. And um, you were absolutely on the right track. It's just, it's so hard to get our brains to pay attention to making things, making sure there's variation in length and width. Because our brains don't really want to work like that. They want to just make the same marks over and over again. So make sure you thicken up some of those lines and let some be thin as well. Thank you. That looks much better. It's looking great. Okay, Adelia, let's look at yours. So I love how big this is. So fun. Because it's scary sometimes to paint big, and I love it when people just do it. So great job. I think she has great value range here. We have some nice dark areas and some nice medium areas here. I love that pop of orange right there. Um, the only thing I want to say is you're kind of having the opposite problem from Cindy, where you're doing a great job playing with like the different thicknesses, but they all are about the same size. So don't be afraid to go in there and be like, Throw that in there. Oh, I didn't even ask if it's okay if I paint it on this. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't want to assume. So really let some of these kind of like overlap and get a little bit longer in there. There, and they're all kind of still going around this like big egg, sh this nest shape here. So even if you're using water, just to, I'm not gonna touch that because I really like how that is and I don't wanna mess it up. But like even like just using water to spread out some of the color that you already have, you can totally do that too. Because you're just trying to get things a little bit more messy in there. But it's looking great. Thank you. All right, Samantha, let's see how yours is. Okay, this looks so great. Look at this, okay. She has great range in value, so we have some dark, some mediums, and she leaves left space for her highlights, which is perfect, because we're going to about to blend some out. The only thing that I would suggest, we have great, you have great long and thin and nice and short, so you did a great job paying attention to that. The only thing I would say is your dark values are reading really gray, and that's just because we use a little bit too much black when mixing. So I know that when we mix in colors and we wanna make something darker, it's really easy to reach for that black and do that. But sometimes when we do that, it kinda of takes the color out of the things and grays down the color. Nothing wrong with that, it's totally normal, and you can actually just do another wash on top of it to put a little bit of life back in there. Is it okay if I paint on this? Please. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange. And so just right on top over those black, I'm just gonna try and do drops of color in there just so like that dark value is more of a really warm brown okay. instead of a gray black. Yeah. So you can just go right over top of it. Because the only thing is when we if we do, if we add black to all of the colors and they all have that gray feel, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's just when we do it with one of them that it almost feels separated for, with the other one. So we want to make sure that they all feel like they live in the same world. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, very nice. Good job. Yeah, so we just like warmed it back up. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. So we're gonna move on to our lighter values. Now what I like to do, because I just love that watercolor that does so much work for me, I'm not even gonna pick up any more paint. I'm just gonna use the paint that's already on my painting to put in my lighter values. So essentially I'm just gonna use a damp brush and just with the colors that are already there, I'm just gonna start spreading them a little bit. Now remember to still leave some white spaces for our highlights. We don't wanna get rid of those totally. Gosh, and now that I'm looking at it, I feel like my blacks are a little bit too gray too, so I'm gonna put in some orange on top of them to warm them up. Now, and this is where we can start putting our little twigs in and our textures in. So kind of like around the edges, you can use your round two or your round six, you can start putting in your thin, like little twig things that are poking out. So you um, feel free to use more uh, orange and yellow in this part. Yellow is just a lighter value color naturally. 
Um, so, and I just, for me personally, I just love pops of color. I just feel like it adds so much to a painting when you're just like, I'm gonna put yellow here, even though my brain is telling me it doesn't make sense, it's okay. So I'm gonna start like putting out my little twigs. And you can use this doing your light value, you can use this doing, using your dark value. Do a, a, do a few of both actually. And these twigs are gonna be overlapping. They're gonna run into each other. They're gonna be kind of funky shaped and that is okay. Because sometimes maybe it's not even twigs, maybe it's dog hair. Like, <laughs> like when uh, we filmed this tutorial, Michael was telling me their, their dog, all of the nests around their house are made out of their Labrador dog's hair. Yeah. <laughs> is the dog, is his dog's name Lady? Yeah. yeah, his dog's name is Lady. She was sweet, she was a really sweet dog. So maybe, and you can even do pops of color if you want to put blue in there. Maybe they maybe they found a piece of blue string or a blue shoelace or whatever. Like, you can really play with this. You have freedom to do that. And, oh, do you know what I saw that I totally loved? Some people added leaves to theirs. Oh, that would be good. So great. I loved that idea. I'm going to do that to mine. We don't have green in here, but that's okay. Just grab a little bit of blue and a little bit of yellow and mix that together and you have green, my friends. What so kind of leaf are you gonna do? What do you mean? Well, I, I mean like different types of leaves? I thought it'd be a good opportunity to do a practice leaf and show people how to do a different leaf. Keenan, you're right. Good for you. Okay, so if this was my little twig here or my stick. I'm just going to do like a couple little leaves coming off of it. Now I like, here's the funny thing about leaves. There's so many different kinds. They're all different shapes, all different widths. So for me, I tend to like my leaves to be kind of fat in the middle and then narrow at the top and the bottom. So kind of like, think of if you're drawing like an eyeball, like, you know, like an eye, I guess, not a ball, but like the eye shape or a mouth or something where it kind of like, goes out and then comes back in. Or a leaf. Or a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of drawing. <laughs> if you don't want to draw a leaf, you don't try, draw draw a leaf an try draw an eye <laughs> When you get the lips perfect, then you can draw a leaf. <laughs> touche, Keenan, touche. <laughs> so on your little, and if you want to make them longer and thinner, totally fine, it's the same process. You're just going to make them longer and not go out as much. So there's a longer and thinner leaf. I got another joke. Oh, I'm so <laughs> ready for it. Okay. Yes. What do you call the painting a bird makes? What do you call a painting a bird makes? Yes. What? A bird's piece. <laughs> 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 You're hired. You can write jokes for our show. You can have my job. <laughs> you can have Kenan's job. <laughs> It'd be a bit of a drive, but... <laughs> It'd be a bit of a drive. <laughs> the perks are great. Kenan doesn't get paid, by the way. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so if I have some of these little sticks poking out and I want to do a couple leaves, I'm just going to put a couple here and there. Now, these are like little baby leaves. But you can make your leaves big if you want. This is your painting, so feel free to play with it. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Maybe do like one or two. Oh gosh, I love that. I love adding that pop of green in there. Just it to life. Okay, and so now I'm kind of getting to the point where I should hopefully be filling in most of my white spaces. Now there are gonna be a couple here and there for our highlights, but if you're looking at, if I'm looking at my nest, then this white area right here, that's too thick. That's too much white going on right there. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of color and a, a little bit of water and kind of like get rid of so much white space. So 
So remember, you want to leave some of your white spaces in, but not so much that it becomes distracting. You want to have the white spaces be a little highlights, like a little like, there you go, here's a little, the sun is shining right there, right, you know? But if you go, if you leave too much white space and it becomes um, distracting to what's going on in the painting. And you can just blend out those white spaces using water. Or grab a little bit of color, whatever. Man, our colors got all mixed up here, didn't they, Cindy? Yeah, they seem to work, though. Yeah. Just gonna put a little bit of orange down. Are you putting leaves in your nest? Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> yes. That's a good idea. Wait, what was I doing? Oh, I'm making more twigs. Now remember, if you do add water to it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get like messy and it's not going to be as sharp. That's okay. Like my things are kind of running together and I'm not having that sharp edge because I added water to it and blended out. I'm not mad about it. That's what watercolor wants to do, so it's not a huge deal. If you want it to stay nice and sharp, then don't take your water and like blend all, all across. Just do your layers. Oh, I love that. Very nice. <laughs> well, it was a happy accident. <laughs> so keep playing with it. Um, you really can like go crazy with this. Um, I think it's okay to do that. Just make sure you have those three values. If you overwork it too much by doing too many layers and, and doing layer on top of layer over the entire thing, then you will lose those values. So it's okay to do layers, but make sure you're aware and um, paying attention to the values that are going on in this painting. Make sure you still have your highlights, your mediums, and your darker values. Sandra said she accidentally has a black patch. How can she hide it? So let's say you have like a black patch right here. So something that you can do is you can just drop color right over top of it. So I just dropped orange right over. And then I'm also kind of blending that black out a little bit. So I'm trying to like thin and tone it down by bringing the surrounding area a little bit darker around it so it won't stick out as much and then trying to do a color right over it. Or if you want, you can try and lift color. And I will show you how to do that. So let's say I wanna lighten up this area right here. What I can do is I get my brush clean, I get some water. I'm just gonna put water straight on top of it and then I can try and lift it using my paper towel. Now the longer it's been there, the harder it is to lift, but you can see it lifted up some of that color. So it lighten some of that color up. You could even try, you can try doing that a couple of times, but the more a color is on the paper, the harder it is to lift up, like the longer it's on the paper. <coughs> okay, so the next thing we are going to do, and I'm going to switch it up a little bit than how I taught in the <coughs> tutorial. In the tutorial, I first finished off the eggs and then I did the shadows underneath it, but I'm going to switch that around. I want to do my shadows on my eggs first because I just think it will be easier in terms of things not bleeding if we switch it up. So, what I'm going to do, so I want to kind of darken 
um, underneath my eggs because our eggs have weight to them. So they themselves are casting a shadow on our nest. We need to ground them a little bit. Since they're kind of floating in this like even thing, they're not, they don't feel like they're necessarily laying there and have weight to them. So to give them a little bit of weight and to make them feel like they're actually laying in the nest, we need to give them a little bit of extra shadow underneath them. So I'm gonna take my six, I'm gonna get some black, I'm gonna mix it with some orange to get a brown, maybe a little bit of yellow. I want a little bit more orange to warm it up. And then around the eggs, I'm going to do a shadow. Now this is where it gets tricky because what we're gonna to want to do is outline all of the eggs, but really, the darkest part is going to be kind of more in the middle because that's where all of them are gathered and that's usually like the lowest point. Like they're all like fallen, like sunken in, almost as if the bottom of that nest is like curving down to the bottom. So I'm not gonna like go around the entire thing. I'm gonna kind of start in the middle here and then kind of go on the edges a little bit, like where those eggs are meeting. And then, because I don't like hard lines personally, I'm going to take my brush and blend out the shadows around. So the darkest part is gonna be right, right in the middle and right where it's meeting in between the eggs. And then we're just going to spread out that color so it's more of a smooth transition and not so, um, such a hard, edge line. And you can see that just by putting that shadow in, those eggs already look like they're laying in there a little bit more, right? Like they have a weight to them and they're actually in there. This was my favorite part of editing the tutorial because it was like, oh, these are egg shapes. <laughs> oh. And then you started to shade them in and it's just, oh, <laughs> it just blew my mind. I it's love so it. amazing. It is. It's great when things just like come together because you're like, I don't know about this. And you're like, no, just, just hold on. Because most of the time when you're painting something, the process of it, it looks a little wonky, right? Like while you're painting it, you're like, is this really going to turn out? But it does. You can't stop halfway through. You got to give it a chance. Yeah. Is, is this a set of lips or is it a leaf? I mean, what, <laughs> what is it really? Is this an eyeball or is it a leaf? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh. Gosh, I love just adding that extra little thing of depth. Now, if you want the whole bottom of the nest to feel like it's a little bit farther away, then you can darken the entire thing. You totally can darken, that will push it farther back. The only thing I want you to be careful of is you still wanna make sure that right around those eggs you have that shadow. It's so important to ground those eggs in that nest. So you can do another layer in here to try and like darken that up. But just make sure that like the darkest part on your painting is going to be right underneath those eggs. And if you have, a, you have to use a little bit more black to do so, that's okay. Shadows are black and gray in general. So that, that's where it's okay. Now, as I'm adding my shadows, it's totally changing the shape of my eggs, but that's okay too. <laughs> Don't let that get you down. This one is like now almost perfectly round. <laughs> so I'm going to try and so oval it. It's touching the other egg. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to reshape it a little bit. Just be flexible. You're going to do, you just got to like make changes as you go. And it's okay. Because everybody does it. Even if you've been painting for years and years. Everybody kind of slips once in a while and all of a sudden your egg is a weird shape and that's okay. I want to read this comment real quick from YouTube. Yeah. Oh no, I just dropped the orange bottle on the painting. <laughs> oh no. But what I love is the next comment says, it's okay, Sean. 
It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm sorry you dropped the orange bottle. Okay. So, I grounded my eggs. Now, I would suggest giving that a second to dry a little bit because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and actually shape our eggs. So if we try and do it while it's still super wet, then they're going to start like bleeding together a lot, which actually really isn't the worst thing because they're overlapping and there's like dirt in there. So if there's brown on top of your eggs, that's a normal thing. Um, but if you want to keep it sharp, just let it dry a little bit more. But I think I'm ready. I only have one really wet part and I feel confident enough just to go for it. So. I am going to grab a little bit of blue and I grabbed a little bit of yellow, like just a tiny bit of yellow because I still want a blue color, but I want it to be kind of like a turquoisey blue, you know, like robin eggs. They kind of have like a soft, uh, really light hint of green to them. It's like a robin egg blue. <laughs> like picture the color robin egg blue. That's what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's no wonder he is back behind the camera. <laughs> he's a brain. He's doing a good job. He is. Okay, so what I like to do, so I'm going to go in with, and you can test this color. If you want to test it before you actually put it in your painting, feel free to. That's a good color. I like that color. So, I'm going to go ahead and start coloring my eggs. Now, I'm gonna start on the edges and work my way around, like so. I want to make sure that I leave the top part of them highlighted. So I'm not actually gonna to touch them yet. I'm gonna kinda of just start putting in the shadows around them to start giving them a little bit more dimension. <laughs> So I put like the colorant around and then just using a damp brush, no color, I'm gonna softly blend out, but still leave that highlight in the middle. And then if you want, you can use the brown from around it or if you wanna grab a little bit of brown and mix it in with your blue, we're gonna put in our shadow on our eggs. So kind of around the edges, right where that egg is kind of starting to turn away, we're gonna to wanna to start putting in that shadow because we're gonna get a darker value because it's turning away from the light. Like so. And look, like look how much dimension this egg has compared to all these. Isn't that amazing? I love art. <laughs> I love watching. Good. Kenan, I'm going to have you paint on here one time. It's going to be great. Classic. I'm sick that day. So. <laughs> I can't. I'm busy. We're busy. <laughs> so just do that to all of your eggs. So go around with some color. And then softly blend around the top so it's not, because we don't want it to feel like a hard outline, right? I'm not taking a color and just doing an outline around the edge of my egg and then calling it a day. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that, but then I'm gonna blend it. So that transition, so it's basically just like a damp brush and kind of softening that edge so it's not so hard. And if you lose the highlight on one of your eggs and you accidentally swoop over it, that's okay. Don't let that stop you, it's not a huge deal. Okay, and then go ahead and put in your shadow. Yeah. That looks great. I love that. I love that color wash. Yeah. You guys, look at you problem solving. That's so great. Sure, but no, that's exactly what I would do. Okay. That's exactly what I would do. Uh, they asked if there is a fine white line between the egg and the nest. So um, if, sometimes I do that, if the nest, if the bottom of your nest is super 
super wet and you don't want things to bleed together, sometimes I will leave a really thin line around it so then those colors don't touch and bleed. Yes, because <laughs> sometimes that can happen. It's not the end of the world if it does. So sometimes I do, like if you look at like this one here on the left-hand side, there kind of is a little bit of a thin white line right there. And um, it just depends on how wet your painting is around it. Now, over here, I went all the way to the edge because it was nice and dry and I wasn't afraid of that kind of blending and bleeding. So just do whatever is working for you. If you do leave a thin white line, honestly, a lot of the times I just leave it. Like when a painting is done, nobody really notices that. Or when it is totally dry, you just take a swoop of your brush and like just put a little bit of color on it so it doesn't seem like a strong highlight or distract. I gotta finish my eggs here. I'm not paying attention, sorry. Just yapping away. I have another joke. I'm ready for it. Okay. So, what do you call an egg that has dots? What do you call an egg that has dots? What? Chicken dots. <laughs> Chicken dots? <laughs> Chicken, Chicken pox. Uh -huh. <laughs> I get it. I'm with you, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> a diseased egg joke. <laughs> I like it. Oh, Blakeland asks where we place the, the shadows. So, the shadows on the egg are going around the edge of it. So, kind of like as if, if you can picture an egg, it's, I know it's hard, but like, think of how it turns away. <laughs> what? Nothing. I'm just prepared to, <laughs> to re-explain <laughs> When I say egg, think of a mouth. <laughs> well, I, I try to picture an egg. <laughs> I was like, what's next? So it's going to be kind of around the edge of the egg that you're putting in your shadows because that's where it's turning away from. Also kind of where maybe the eggs are running into each other because the eggs themselves, if they're next to each other or overlapping, they would be casting a shadow on each other too. So kind of pay attention to how your eggs are overlapping. Somebody is saying which edge. So I've kind of been doing like a swoop around the top, a swoop around the bottom. They are not touching, so it's not an outline, but kind of like on one side and then on the other side. And then if you want to put some speckles in, you can take your round two or the tip of your round six and just kind of like dot them in. If they're wet, they're going to kind of bleed out and um, blend and that's okay. Or if you want them nice and sharp, then you wait till your egg is dry. I think you can do one or the other or whatever one you want. I don't think that there is a wrong way. Now I am doing more of a lighter value on this. I'm not using like straight black to do like polka dots, because sometimes if the value is too dark, then it is distracting. However, the dots on eggs also varies. Some of them do have black dots. Yeah. I made that up, I don't know if that's true. I think I've seen some, <laughs> I, I, think I've seen, I think I've seen some freckled eggs before. Yeah, are they like really dark though? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Yeah. You say it. <laughs> Chicken eggs have dots on them. Yeah. Dark dots. Yeah. That looks great. That's really nice. That's really nice. Thank you. I'm thinking of my of my ladies. Yeah, your chicken my, ladies at my home. My ladies at home. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to remember all the names. My daughter's named all of our chickens, and there are some great names. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, Star Starfire is one. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Is Starfire from a show? I it could be honestly. Sounds familiar. It you, could be. You I know like you it. can get you can get bracelets for them. Can you really? Yeah, so that they can have you can. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you can get these little bracelets, um, and they you it has a little charm on it, and and then you can uh, name them. And, the, and then, if, so if you've got a bunch of them that are the same, yeah. you can tell what, which one is which. I'm going to get, my girls would die. Are you serious? Bracelets on our Bracelets. chickens? Oh my gosh, so it's, good. So, it's so sweet. I'm going to get that. And then, yes. you can also, 
I'm not teasing. I just, okay. I'm just happy. That's, okay. that's cool. So <laughs> in your chicken coop where your nesting boxes yeah. are, yeah. you really like privacy. Uh huh. So you just make little curtains oh. so that they can go into their boxes. That's so cute. And have that's adorable. Privacy. It's adorable. That's so cute. And great. we have so much chicken fabric. At Missouri Star. We you know, do. Just That's why little. she's here. She's like, Missouri Star, we have yeah, chicken that was fabric. The plug. <laughs> that was my plug, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put that in a royalty check. That's so great. That's so great. We'll have to get together. I'll Please tell me all of the chicken accessories that I can put in oh, our cute can. little oh, chicken coop because oh, no. that so sounds amazing. Crazy. But we, oh, I'm trying to think. So we have, we have Crystal, we have Starfire, we have Harper, we have Hot Dog, we yes. have. <laughs> can you guess who named that one? Oh, wow. Yes, my three-year-old daughter Luna is upset. She was a hot dog for Halloween. She loves hot. She just loves hot dogs so much. For some reason, I kind of thought maybe that was Michael. <laughs> Who named it? Yeah. Okay, Keenan, can we do the side camera? And I'm yeah. going to turn this to be the orientation of the side camera so you guys can get a better close up view of what's going on. I love your speckles so yeah, yeah. much. Did you splatter those? Yeah, I went like <gasps> that. I'm going to do that. that. Yeah. Okay, this was a tip nice. from Adelia. She took okay. her round. Too. She got it with paint and then she just took her paintbrush. Wait, do I need more? Oh, there it goes. Oh, there it goes. Oh, and it speckles them so nice. With the number two? Yeah. I think maybe the six would go a little while. I'm going to try it. Why not? I better, <laughs> better finish everything first. Okay, I'm going to try it. Oh, yeah. Yes, that looks so good. Thank you so much for that tip. I love how that looks. I got a little speckles around my nest, but I like that and I'm just going to embrace that actually. So I'm just going to like add a little bit more because you only live once. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I have another joke. Okay. <laughs> okay. Never stop the jokes. Okay. So when you said the A's not together, I had, I had the idea of making a joke. Okay. okay. So what do you call A's that knock each other? What do you call eggs that knock each other? Yes. What? Egg knock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here tonight. You are making my night so much. Okay, so we put in our eggs. We have the highlights. We have the shadows. We have the great speckles. Now this is where, oh, Brianna's is using salt to speckle her eggs. Yes. Good job, I love salt. So, now we're kind of moving on to that last step. This is where it's really important. Step number five, I call it details. Really, I should call it like, put your painting far away from you and walk away from it for a bit and then come back to it. Because sometimes we're so in our painting, we're like this close to it the whole time that we don't notice things that are sticking out. And the best way to notice things that are sticking out is to look at it from far away or stop looking at it for a while. So. Take a moment to just like put it away from you or like stand up or like just look at it from a different perspective and see what can I do? Is anything sticking out here? Is there anything that is distracting from what I'm trying to say or trying to show? So I want to actually sharpen some of my dark values because when I went in and I blended out the colors, um, I liked the colors that I got as I blended them out, but I feel like I lost some sharp of my dark and I wanna put those back in. So I'm dry now, so it's okay. I can do another layer. So I'm making some dark brown here. And I'm just going to go over some of my dark edges. So it's just gonna be a few little dark detail lines that I'm putting back in. And some of them are thin and some of them are thick. And maybe I'll add a little another like twig. I don't, I just, I really want another one poking out.
Maybe you could put a little bug because like robins lay their eggs in spring, so. Yeah, like, like a little ladybug or a, that's a good idea. Maybe like a spider. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, are you scared of spiders? No. No? Yeah, you are. <laughs> okay. Yeah, very nice. It's nice to put those back in there. You gotta have those, put those shadows back in there. Okay, I think we might be ready to start to show them. What do you guys think? You feel ready? Okay. So we are going to hold up our eggs. I'm so happy about these leaves that I added. I love your little flower too. Thank you. <sighs> this project is fun. Okay, so we're gonna hold up our paintings and Keenan is going to slowly pan across so we can see all here. Is that the right orientation? But yeah, okay. And he's just going to pan across so we can see all of our different paintings. Okay, switching. Here we go. There's Cindy's. Look Cindy, at those. good job. Oh, got some wispies. There's Sarah's. The little leaves there. I'm going to okay. mispronounce your name. Adelia. 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 There it is. Look at those. Those are beautiful. Look at the speckles on her eggs. I love them zoom in a so bit much. For you. Those look so good. They look alive. So like great. Pools of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Samantha's eggs and nest. There it is. So good. Excellent. I love her thin wispies on the outside too. It reminds me of like hay. Like there's lots of layers of hay going oh, on. Yeah. So great, you guys. Okay. Thank you so much for painting with us. I really had such a good time tonight. I hope you guys did too. Um, what we really focus here at Let's Make Art is it's not about creating something that's perfect or doing it right perfectly the very first time. It's just about taking time to create something and learn something and just have fun. Even if it didn't turn out great, that's okay. We took this moment to like laugh and play with something. And I think that that's really important for us to do. So you guys are amazing. Thank you for joining us. Um, if you painted, share it. We wanna see it. Everybody wants to see it. Like, honestly, I know that some of the favorite times that people have is watching what we've painted up here and being able to see what we've done. And so that's why I encourage you to do it too. And when we see how other people approach the same project, we learn from them. Like I learned that I could speckle my eggs from Adelia. Like that's so great. And sometimes ideas don't come to us. And so by seeing how other people approach it, we can be like, hey, I'm gonna try that next time. It's all about learning. It's not about comparing. It's not about trying to make other people feel bad or you're scared to post it. It's just about how you can better your own or try something new. So if you're on Instagram, you could tag us in it. Uh, let's go make art is our Instagram handle or you can hashtag let's make art. Uh, if you share it on Facebook, it's the same thing. We do have two Facebook things. I guess I should be more clear. We have a group Facebook page called let's make art. And we also have a, uh, that one's like more business. And then we have a wonderful community called let's make art watercolor. And that one is wonderful because we are all sharing the art that we make. And it's um, a really supportive community that it is encouraging because we're all on different um, levels in our journey and so if you don't feel comfortable sharing it to like maybe your friends list but you want to like start putting it out there that is a great place to start sharing your work and um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to say oh um, boxes April boxes I know most of you got them but a handful of you have not I am so so sorry about that you guys have been really gracious and understanding there are five Tuesdays in the month so if you guys would like for those who don't have those boxes I don't mind doing this doing a live on the fifth Tuesday along with our postcard for this nest if you guys want to do that if you weren't able to get your box by today. So let me know if that's something you want to do. I'm totally okay with that. I'll paint with you any day. So is there anything else I need to say? I don't think so. You guys are great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank I really you. had a great time. Oh gosh, this was awesome. And um, that's it. Thanks guys. Bye.